in this episode. I'm coming up with how to solve system linear equations in two variables using elimination method. Back into action. Hey guys, in this episode we will be focusing on elimination method for solving simultaneous linear equations in two variables or system linear equations in two variables if you wish. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, there are, there are two different methods, two different techniques to solve the simultaneous linear equations in two variables. So, for substitution method, you could check out my other video. I have a separate video on substitution. Now, Simultaneous linear equation in two variables, or sometimes it's called system linear equations of system linear equations in two variables. So let's break it down. So you have two linear equations, you have two variables, typically x and y, it could be other two variables like a and b, doesn't matter. But linear means that the highest power of x and y is just 1. That's why it calls linear. So basically here we have x raised to the power of 1. It's implied. It's understood to be 1. And y, the same goes for y. The same applies for 1. That's why it's called linear. Because it could be even quadratic. But it's completely another story. Now, what does it mean to solve? at these simultaneous linear equations in two variables. That means you have to come up with x and y, so the values, the actual values of x and y that work, that satisfy both equations. That's why simultaneously. So it would be like a pair, a unique pair of numbers that when you substitute, when you plug it in back instead of x and y, that make your equations true. All right. To be perfectly frank with you, sometimes you would have not only one solution. You could have infinitely many. And I will get back to this at the end. So keep watching. Stay tuned. Now. We will be doing elimination method. And basically, that name implies that we are going to eliminate, we are going to get rid of or kill, if you like, one of the variables by adding or subtracting these two equations vertically. Yes, vertically. So we are going to add or we are going to subtract them vertically. So this way, up and down. Now, if you look at these two equations, you might notice that your x shows up in the first one and negative x shows up in the second one. So basically you have a positive and negative version of your x. So if you add them vertically, so x minus x gives you zero. So we could get rid of this x. But before we get into this, just one little pro tip, one little tip. Make sure that your both equations order it. So they are in a correct in apple pie order. Because sometimes it's kind of mess. X and Y could be switched, swapped, and sometimes constant given on the left side. So make sure they are written in a kind of apple pie order. So x is one above and another each other. Y comes 
second or the, the, or the could be swapped actually, it doesn't matter. But the constant is on the right side by itself. So then in perfect order and we are ready, we are ready to add them. Now, technically you just add them. So x minus x gives you zero. So that's why we eliminate, we kill this variable x. So there is no x. So I'm going to just spell it out for now, but you could just ignore it. Now, 9y plus y gives you 10y. You drop down, you carry down this equality sign. And since 0 plus 10 gives you 10, so do not forget to add this constant as well, because you have to add them also. Now there is no x, and we came up with the equation in terms of y. So only one variable appears in our equation. It's basic linear equation and one variable. And we could solve it for y easily, instantly, right off the bat. So that gives you your y. You typically divided by 10, both sides, and you would get this beautiful value for y, which is 1. So we're almost done, we're almost there, this is your y, but we're not done, since we're looking for both x and y. So now, you take your y, and you substitute, you plug it in back, either first one or second one. You could pick, you could choose. I mean, in this case, I mean, obviously you should go for the easiest one because you don't want to do that much work of plugging and chugging, of substituting, open up, cleaning up and finding this value, distributing, blah, blah, blah. So I would go for the second one since you have the coefficient of y is 1, so it would be easier to express. So, I mean, to, to multiply. But you could also do with the first one. Now, I'm going to take the second one at this point. Negative x plus y. Instead of y, I'm going to write 1. So I'm plug it in there. Equals 10. And all I need to do is just express my x. So I could move x to this side and 10 to that side. So your x becomes, so one minus 10. So you add x and you subtract 10 to both sides. Cancel. And you would end up with your x equals negative one. So this is your x. Well done. This is your solution. You could leave your answer like this. You could write your answers x equals a number, y equals a number, or sometimes you could place them in a parenthesis, separated by comma, and you typically put x first, x comes first, and y comes second. So this is just another version of your solution. So this is your solution. So you could either write like this or like this. You don't have to write both. It would be overkill. Now, one little pro tip. You could check out your answer. You could verify it. To verify it, you just take this, verify. You could just take this x and y and you plug it in back into both original equations and make sure it works and it checks out. So let's do it. 4x equals negative 9. So you would have negative 9 plus 9 times 1. Check to see does it equal to 0. So negative 9 plus just 9 which is actually zero, so it works, true. So the same, you could go for second one, yeah? So you would have negative x, so negative nine, nine, 
plus 1 does it equal 10 yes it does so since 10 equals 10 it's true also true so this is your solution ordered pair for that simultaneous linear equations into variables I always keep saying that life is not that easy unfortunately and why let's take a look at this one so at the first glimpse check to see if you can add them vertically and kill one of the variables no you cannot you cannot kill anything <laughs> because you have x you have 3x you have 10y you have so there is no like opposite versions of the variable so it doesn't work at the first glimpse but we can make it work and we still can kill if we want to kill um, now the second equation containing 3x and the first one has x so we could tweak we could kind of adjust one of the equation in order to after we can add and things terms could be eliminated could be cancelled each other out so if you look at the first one and since x has the coefficient of one it would be easy to make it so and i aiming for this three so i would multiply the first equation by negative three so if i multiply the first entire equation by negative three i would have negative three x and after when we add with this three x this x would be disappeared would be de de uh, evaporated so the trick is to multiply one of the equation by a fixed number that actually would be the opposite version of the one coefficient and after you add or here i'm focusing on x term you could either go for y term for example another way of of doing this you could eliminate you could aim in for y term and since you have 10 y here and you have y here the second one you could multiply by negative 2 so if you multiply this second entire equation by negative 2 it would give you negative 10 so you would eliminate this y so you will be focusing on eliminating y so to like sum up there is no right way of solving them so you could either use aiming for x or y it's completely up to your whim or the way it's easier for you the way you see it's easier so i would go for x so we multiply the entire first equation by negative three because i want the y negative three because i want the opposite the opposite number the opposite coefficient that would cancel each other after addition so it gets minus 3x I'm going to rewrite the first one by after multiplying by negative 3 so negative you switch the sign and it becomes positive 42 and I'm going to rewrite the second equation as is just line up under the first one okay at this point we are ready we are ready to add them vertically this way so since we multiplied the first one by negative three in order to eliminate x so after when we add this one goes away disappeared magically what we actually wanted now minus three y 
plus 5y gives you negative 25y. You do this maths. You drop down, you carry down this equality sign and align all these things. 42 minus 22 actually. So it gives you 20. And final step. So we are looking for y. We want to isolate y. We divide by negative 25. Both sides. And we end up with y equals negative. And we could just reduce this fraction, get it in the simplest form conceivable, possible. So we could reduce by 5, I believe. So 5 goes into 24 times. And here you would be left with 5. It's just negative 4 fifths. This is your y. This is halfway. And now we are going to get that x. From where? Again, like we did before, you could either go for first for the second. Personally, I would rather deal with the second because you already has you already have this x. So there is no coefficient attached. So it would be easier to express a x in terms of other variables. So from the first one your x becomes I'm going to move negative uh, 10 y to the right side by subtracting 10 y and all you need to do is just take this y which is negative 4 fifths and you're going to insert, you're going to place it instead of y into that equation. So it becomes negative 14 ne minus 10. So just the, watch out these fractions because so much things to make slides, slip ups and errors. So when you multiply 5 goes into 10 twice And you will be left with negative 14 plus 8. So your x is actually negative 6. This is your x. We are done, we solve it for x and y, and again, my pro tip, you could verify, you could check out your answer by taking the, this x and y and plug it in back, substituting into both original equations, and make sure everything checks out, and it does. Alright guys, things getting more overwhelming. <laughs> Suppose you are given that one. So first thing, check to see if you just can add them up vertically or you can also subtract them off and eliminate one of the variables. No, you cannot. Since you have two, three, three, two, there is no positive and negative version of the same number, so doesn't work at this glimpse. Now, try to do what we did before, tweak or adjust by using algebra one of the equations. So, again, 2 and 3, 3 and 2. We get stuck now. <laughs> so, since they're both, of, not, they're not actually the multiples of each other. So, the trick is we have to adjust both of these equations. So, what we can do, we can multiply the first by a number and we could multiply the second by a number. And after, we could get the same version, the positive and negative version of the same number and after we could add them or subtract. 
Well, the first one I'm going to multiply by 3. The entire equation. And the second one I'm going to multiply by 2. Why? Because it gives me 6. And I could subtract them off. So 6 actually is a least common multiple or LCM. So you could basically go for LCM because you don't need to get these big numbers. So you could aim in for LCM of these coefficients. It would help you. Least common multiple. Now, again, you could either multiply the first one by negative 3 and the second by 2 and add them, or the second way, as I mentioned before, there is no right way of solving them. There are different variations. Or you could either multiply the second by negative 2 and add them, or there is a third way, and I'm going to implement the third way. I'm going to show you another way. I'm going to multiply the first one by 3, the second one by 2, but instead of adding, I'm going to subtract them. Yes, you can subtract them instead of adding. It's basically the same. But I'm going to do it on purpose to show you that you could subtract them. Now, let's do it. The first one entire multiply by 3 and it gives me... 6x plus 9y equals 3. So, entire expression. The second one multiply by 2. 6x plus 4y equals 0. So, 0 times anything still remains 0. And instead of adding, I'm going to subtract them. It's basically the same. You would see. 6x minus 6x gonna be eliminated so we get rid of this 6x now 9y minus 4y gives me 5y and 3 minus 0 3 basically we are done we came up with a basic linear equation and one variable for y and we solve it for y at this page at this stage at this point so y equals page y equals 3 over 5, 3 fifths, and this is your y, this is half of the solution, we are not done yet. Now, you take this y, and the same thing as we did before, you are going to substitute, you are going to plug in e either first or second, which one to choose, which one to pick, which one to select, entirely up to your whim, because you have x, y, x, y, x, y, so there is no preferences at this point because none of them is easier to do this. So just pick whatever, whatever you want. So I will go for first one, let's do or second one, okay, second one for a change because first one I think we did before. Let's, let's, let's do for the second one for, for a change. So 3x. And I'm going to move this to Y on the right side. Now, I think uh, the second one is easy because you have zero and it would just give you zero, this negative to Y. I think second one is better. Now, instead of Y, I'm going to write three fourths, three fifths. So your three X becomes negative two times three fifths. And your 3x is just negative 6 over 5. And the last step, you want to isolate this x. You want to make x as a subject of the formula. Divided by 3, both sides. And this complex fraction comes out. So your x is... So it's the same thing. You have to keep this negative sign. 6 fifths you multiply by 1 over 3. So 
So when you divide by a number, it's the same thing as you multiply by reciprocal. So you invert it, switch top and bottom. So since three goes into six twice, your x is negative two over five. So these pesky fractions come up, but still carry on regardless. So this is my x and this is y. So you could typically put your answer in as a pair, ordered pair, x comes first, y comes second. So this is your solution for that one. And again, at this point, you could verify your answer, you could check it out by taking this x and y and plug it in back into these two original equations and make sure it checks out. One little remark guys, it might come out when you deal with simultaneous linear equations and two variables. Let's have a look at the first one. I'm going to just do it kind of quickly. So the first one I'm going to multiply by 3. Since I have 6 here and I'm aiming for 6. And after I will just subtract them. This is my plan. So multiply by 3. Both sides. So it becomes 6x minus well, y equals negative 6. And the second one I'm going to rewrite is this. And I'm going to subtract them. Since you have 6x and 6x positive. So they're both positive, so we go for subtraction. And you would get 0 minus 12y minus minus plus 12y 0 minus 6 surprise surprise 0 equals 0 weird bizarre yes no <laughs> as I said it might come up so what is that? What does it mean? It's always true. It's always true. Zero equals zero. And it could be thought at any pair of X and Y would work for your equations. So Whatever pair of X and Y would, we would come up would also work, would satisfy both of these linear equations in X and Y. So, to conclude that your system of equations has infinitely many solutions. It's not one solution. It's infinitely many solutions. So, any time that when you get something like a number equals itself, a number equals the same number, like 0 equals 0, 5 equals 5, 6 equals 6. So your answer is your system consistent. It, the system has a solution, but infinitely many solutions. Many, 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 many solutions. So this is kind of special case, if you like. It might come out. How about this one? So, since I have 4 and I'm going to aim for x, I'm going to multiply the first one by 2, similarly like we did here. So, I would get 4 and I would subtract them instead of adding. So, you multiply by 2, both sides. So, the next line you would get 4. 
x minus 6y equals 2. And you rewrite the second as this. All right, let's add them vertically this way. So 4x minus 4x gives you 0. Minus 6y minus minus 6y. So minus 6y plus 6y. 0. And on the right side, 2 minus 0, it's 2. So you would come up with 0 equals 2. Ask yourself, is that true? No, it's not true. It's nonsense. 0 cannot be equal to... 0 cannot be equal any number, so they're completely rubbish, trash. So that's false. And what does it mean? That simply means that there is no x and y you would ever think of, you would ever come up with, that satisfy to your equations. So there is no x and y pair that you would come up with that make your equations true. So what is your answer in this case? So the answer is there is no solution. Sometimes it's called the system is inconsistent. If you have ever heard about this in So inconsistent, that means your system has no solutions. There is no pair X and Y that work for that system. Or you could either write no solution, or using a set language, I would say, the solution set is an empty set, since the empty set, which is denoted by the symbol, has no elements in it, so it's empty. So there is no elements in it, there is no numbers in it, so that's empty. The solution, is, solution set is an empty set. So, again, it's kind of side note, if you wish, in case that these two cases come up, when you deal with system of linear equations. All right, guys, I hope it helps you. Train your brain and thank you for watching. I know everyone hates maths, but if you like my video, please hit like, share with your friends, leave the comment down below and be sure to subscribe so you will not miss my new videos.